In this video, let us discuss another biasing scheme known as biasing using a drain to gate feedback resistor. This is a simple and effective discrete circuit biasing arrangement that is shown in this figure. Here we connect the gate resistor between the gate and drain of the MOSFET. The RG value typically is in mega ohms, which is a large value that forces the DC voltage at the gate same as the DC voltage at the drain. Since drop across the RG is zero due to the gate current is zero. The RG connected between drain to gate provides a negative feedback that is a feedback from drain to gate. Therefore, the RG is called as degenerative or degeneration resistance. Further, the transistor shown here to be used as an amplifier. Therefore, we need to operate in saturation region. Due to the connectivity between RG, between drain and gate, VG, the gate voltage equals VD, the drain voltage. Therefore, VGD equals 0 volts. The threshold voltage of the transistor is typically 1 volt. The threshold voltage of the transistor is larger than the VGD that is equal to 0. Therefore, the transistor shown here operates in saturation region. Further, let us analyze the circuit more detail by applying the Kirchhoff voltage law from drain to source loop. The part of the circuit shown here is redrawn here for applying Kirchhoff voltage law. Now, by applying KVL, we get minus VDD plus ID times RD drop across the resistor RD plus VDS equals to 0. On rearranging this equation, we get VDD equals IDRD plus VDS. Let us call this as equation 1. From the circuit, we know that gate voltage is equal to drain voltage. That is VG equals VD. Therefore, VGS equals VG minus VS. We can substitute VG as VD. Therefore, VGS equals VG minus VS becomes VD minus VS, which is also equivalent to VDS. So, VGS equals VDS. Therefore, equation 1 can be again rewritten as VDD equals IDRD plus VGS. As we know that the transistor operates in saturation region, the saturation current equation is given by ID equals 1 by 2 mu n COX W by L times VGS minus VT whole square. Equation 2 is a straight line and even equation 1 is also a straight line. Equation 1 or equation 2 can be drawn on ID versus VGS characteristics. So the equation 2 can be written as ID equals minus 1 over RD times VGS plus PDD by RD. The equation here ID equals minus 1 over RD into VGS plus VDD by RD is a straight line equation that resembles y is equal to mx plus c where y is equal to id the slope m of the line defined by this equation is minus 1 over rd x coordinate that is horizontal coordinate is vgs and y intercept is vdd by rd this equation 
can be drawn as a straight line as shown here in red color. The saturation current equation defined by ID given by equation 3 can also be drawn on this curve for two different devices say device 1 as well as device 2. As we have discussed earlier for a batch of devices mu n COX W by L may vary due to which the device exhibits two different characteristics. If you replace in the original bias circuit with a two different transistor that may provide two different curves as shown here. Now in our biasing arrangement defined by this equation we obtain a straight line and we can see that the operating point here for device 1 gives a current as ID1 and replacing the same circuit with alternative device changes the operating point gives current as ID2 for the corresponding intersection of device 2 curve with the straight line. Therefore, the change in this drain current appears to be very small and due to that we can say that the circuit is stable. Also the extreme ends of this straight line can be obtained from this equation by substituting ID equals to 0. We get the Y coordinate substituting ID equals 0 we get X coordinate which is VGS equals VDD. To get the Y coordinate substitute VGS as 0 ID will be equal to VDD by RD VDD by RD therefore the vertical coordinate is 0 comma VDD by RD the horizontal coordinate is VDD comma 0 joining these two points the straight line can be drawn from this biasing scheme we came to know that replacement of devices with circuit with two devices say device 1 and device 2 even though the variations of mu n cox w bell exist for different devices the drain current change in drain current will be very small that means circuits provide constant output the one drawback that this circuits suffers is limited output voltage swing this circuit can be utilized as a common source amplifier by applying the input voltage signal to the gate via a coupling capacitor and also the output can be taken to the next circuit via another coupling capacitor so that the DC bias conditions already established will not get disturbed. Now let us try to look at voltage swing of the drain to gate feedback resistor biasing. From this let us assume that VDD equals 10 volts. Therefore as per the thumb rule the drop across RD is 5 volt and drop across transistor is 5 volt. Now voltage at the drain is 5 volt with respect to the ground. Therefore VG is also equal to 5 volt. Since source is grounded VGS equals 5 volt. Now the swing can be calculated based on the equation here the voltage at the gate is Vg equals 5 volt Vg minus Vt provides the negative swing Vg minus Vt equals 5 minus 1 equals 4 volts similarly the positive swing 
can extend up to supply voltage which is 10 volt. The maximum positive peak of the signal can go up to 10 volt. Negative signal can go up to 4 volt. Therefore, maximum positive swing is 10 minus 5 volt equals 5 volt. Maximum negative swing is 5 minus 4 which is equal to 1 volt. The negative swing approaches the threshold voltage. Therefore, the negative swing is limited. However, we have enough positive swing. This is the drawback of this biasing scheme. This drawback can be overcome in the next biasing scheme known as biasing using a constant current source.